Hello friends. Today's spread is the first of the nine card readings. This one is what I affectionately call the Eye of the Storm spread. It's for when you're having trouble coming up with a specific question and is more of a generic what's going on. Card number one is your start point. It's where am I currently? And then the eight cards that you put around it are the what's affecting my current situation. With that very brief explanation out of the way, let's get into it. And just a quick reminder, there are now links in the descriptions of my videos. The first one is to my Discord server, where you'll have access to be able to ask me questions directly, interact with other viewers. The second link is to my personal website, where you can hire me to do tarot readings, Reiki sessions, etc. And lastly, my Buy Me a Coffee page, if you feel like you want to leave me a little tip or something. That being said, we're going to shuffle up and get right into the reading. As I said, this is a mostly unstructured reading, with only the first card having a specific meaning attached to it. All of the other cards are contributing factors or things to be aware of that are happening around you. Okay, so card one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so before we get into too much, we have three cards reversed, six cards upright. We have three swords, two cups, two wands, and two major arcana. So first card, or the current situation, is the two of swords. The two of swords represents internal conflict, usually in regards to the decision-making process. There is something, some action that needs to be taken, and you're struggling to come to a decision about it. So we're then going to go around the circle of cards and see what contributing factors are there to this state of indecision. The first card was the sun. Well, of the, of the ring. Technically, it's card number two. The sun is about optimism. It is positive change. It is usually masculine energy. It is the drive to bring things to fruition. So in regards to your decision-making process, take an active role. Don't be passive. Card number three is the Page of Swords. In this reading, the Page of Swords feels more like it's a person who's around you. This would be someone who's young and inexperienced, but eager to prove themselves. They are talented, and they are pushing you to, to action but they lack the experience to actually give good counsel. That doesn't mean they don't have bad ideas, though. Just accept their counsel, but don't let it overly influence you in your decision-making process. Card number four is the Queen of Wands reversed. Again, this is going to be representing a person. Probably a woman who is slightly older than you. It's someone who is shrewd. They are cunning, but they're inclined to try to manipulate you to their way of thinking. They don't actually care so much about what's best for you as what is what matches their expectation. They would prefer obedience over the most healthy choice for you. Be cautious in accepting this person's counsel because it's going to come with expectations. Accepting their help will come with requirements. Card number five, the moon. The moon has to do with perceptions. It has to do with lies, illusions, and truth. 
Being upright, this is the ability to discern the truth, to see past the illusions. Just as the moon goes through its phases, so does the ability to easily identify what is true and what is false. Pay attention to the cycles. Are the people around you behaving in a consistent manner? If not, try to figure out why. Card number six is the Ten of Cups, upright. The Ten of Cups represents happiness. It's that, in general, your relationships are going well, and you have enough for your needs. Within this reading and the indecision component of it, when we have sufficient for our needs, it's easy to become complacent. It's easy to lose that drive for improvement. Make sure that you still enjoy the things that you have, enjoy the people around you, but don't lose the desire for continued progress. Card number seven seems to play right into that same concept where we have the seven of wands reversed, which typically is indicative of not making a decision. It's of standing still. When you pair those two cards together, there's the standing still to not displease those around you. That you're trying to maintain an equilibrium of peace and happiness, even though you know there are things you could be doing to feel better to have a better situation for yourself. Card number eight is the King of Swords. The King of Swords is representing an individual again. In this case, a gentleman, a man who is more experienced in relationship to you, who on the outside is stern and gruff. They are highly disciplined. And that discipline has led to them having, how to phrase this, their perspective of the world is very direct. Things are what they are, and they make swift decisions. They would be a very good person to go to for advice, to talk through, these are the paths that I see before me. What do you see as the pitfalls in each path because they will very quickly be able to tell you from their own experience this is a likely consequence of that course of action. They will provide you much more balanced and sound advice than the Queen of Wands reversed because quite frankly the, the King of Swords doesn't care about oh, this sounds so terrible they don't care about you the way that the Queen of Wands does. The Queen of Wands cares too much about you because they want you under their thumb. In this reading, the King of Swords, whoever that's representing, because of their disciplined nature, yes, they are friendly. Yes, they have a positive relationship with you. But your actions do not affect their mental state. So they can provide you a much more honest and direct feedback. Card number nine is the Six of Cups reversed. The Six of Cups represents memory. In this case being reversed, it is the, the melancholy. It is the, instead of looking back with fondness, it's looking back with regret. Whatever decision is in front of you has to deal with resolving that regret. It's actually really interesting looking at the cards and how they are tied together. Because if we take the cards across the circle from each other, those are kind of the forces that are, are tied more tightly, that are opposing or related to each other. Because we have the Queen of Wands reversed, opposed by the King of Swords. Someone who's going to try to manipulate and control you versus someone who is 
trying who will just give you versus someone who will just give you direct advice we have the six of cups reversed opposed by the moon you need to look honestly at your memories as a trite example were the good old days actually the good old days uh the sun and the ten of cups you have this this superficial happiness but you're clearly still worried about something otherwise you wouldn't be facing this choice you have hope about it but some action still needs to be taken to maintain your actual happiness the page of swords opposed by the seven of wands the young impetuous decision maker who's not thinking about consequences opposed by the tendency to overanalyze and not make a decision it sounds like you've got a lot of well-meaning people around you take the lessons that they are willing to share with you but you have to make up your own mind accept the wisdom of the people around you but ultimately you have to make up your own decision that is the long and short of this reading until next time walk in the light my friends bye